We can't evaluate this limit directly by substitution, because if we were to plug in x equals 0, we would have the square root of 1 minus 1 divided by 0, and that's 0 over 0. This is indeterminate, it doesn't tell us anything about the limit, so we need to use a different strategy. In a situation like this, where we have a sum or difference of terms and one of them is a square root, using the conjugate is often useful. The conjugate of this this term is just itself, but with a plus instead of a minus. And what we'll do is multiply this expression by the conjugate divided by the conjugate. So we're really just multiplying by one, but notice in the numerator, we've got this term multiplied by its conjugate, and how multiplying by a conjugate works is that we're just going to end up with the difference of the squares. If we were to do out this multiplication, we would get the square root of x plus 1 times the square root of x plus 1. The square roots cancel out, and it's just x plus 1. We'd also get the square root of x plus 1 times positive 1, and the square root of x plus 1 times negative 1. Those two terms would cancel out. The only thing that would be left is minus 1 times positive 1, which is minus 1. So we end up here in the numerator. We just have that x plus 1 and then the minus 1. In the denominator, we're not going to distribute because if we leave this in its factored form, it will be easier for us to see the cancellation. Notice in the numerator, we have x plus one minus one. So the plus one and the minus one will cancel out and just leave x in the numerator, which can cancel out with the factor of x in the denominator. So doing one minus one, we get here, and then we can cancel out the x's, and then we get here, and at this point, we can plug in x equals zero and evaluate the limit directly. Plugging in x equals zero, we have one divided by the square root of one plus one, which is of course one over two. And so that is the value of the original limit.